Hi, I'm Rival. Welcome to the second video in the Solid Principle series. This is the Open Close Principle. So here are the five Solid Principles once again. And the reason I'm presenting the slide to you once again is to help you memorize each of these principles. As developers, we need to have this embedded in our head so we can call upon this at any time while developing. So let's go through it. S for single responsibility. O for open close, L for Liskov substitution, I for interface segregation, and D for dependency inversion. So let's take a look at the open close principle. The principle says entities or classes should be open for extension but closed for modification. So what does this principle actually mean? Well, we need to keep our classes open for extension. This means we should be able to change the behavior of our classes. But at the same time, we need to keep these classes closed for modification. This means that we should never change the source code of a class. And this may be tough, but this is a goal we need to strive for. If you cannot achieve this goal, it is okay, but it's highly recommended that you try your hardest to do so. So why should we follow this principle? Well, it is to make sure that code is easier to maintain. It also prevents code rot. And number three, it prevents errors in the code. You see, when you're closing a class or modification, you're preventing developers from going into your class and changing working functions. That's not something that people want to do. If you keep your functions closed, no one will ever have to modify that code because if you can't uh, extend your class, you will be able to extend without modifying code. Once you start modifying code, it opens up space for errors and you don't want to be rewriting functions breaking the function even though it satisfies your new requirement you may be unsure that it doesn't you know it doesn't actually satisfy its original need okay guys so let's take a look at the open closed principle using code in front of us we have a project that makes t um, that we can take a look at the reval object here and it has some instructions on how to make t then following the single responsibility principle, I've created another class called TMaker. And what this does is makes T using instructions from the Reval object. Um, if we look at our index.php file, it uses the Reval, it instantiates the Reval object, the TMaker object, and then makes T. So let's take a look at that. Reval's T, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it has made T using Reval's instructions. So this is all good, but what happens if we wanted to make T for someone else? Okay, so let's take a look at our T maker. Our T maker has Reval dotted all over the place and even ex has a type hint for Reval. Now we are actually breaking the open close principle with this uh, class. Reason being is because now we need to extend it, but we can't because we have to modify the code. So that's not what we want to do. To prevent this from happening, what we can do is use something called an interface and um, let's show you how to do that so um, i already have an interface here called instructions interface and if you don't know what an interface is an interface uh, is pretty much like a contract and it has a set of functions and any class that implements an interface has to have the functions that the interface declares so we have public function make t instructions. So any class that implements it needs the make t instructions method. So let's go back to tmaker and let's strip out all the references for Revolve. So we're going to have instructions over here. Go instructions, replace that, replace that, replace that, and replace that. Great. And over here, we are going to call this instructions interface. Great. So now that takes care of the tmaker class. Go back to instructions just to make sure it's namespace. And then we have Reval. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that Reval implements the instructions interface. 
So we have the make T instructions just like the interface instructs us to have. So back here, let's run this, see if this works. And great, so we have vault T one red push T bag. So let's make T for someone called Jack. Create a new file and um, PHP, and we'll save that as jack.php. And we'll just copy this to make it easier for us. Okay, so Jack will have, I don't know, let's say English, one English tea, English breakfast, I think it is. English breakfast tea bag. And Jack will, let's say, take two sugars and no milk. Okay, so remember, we still want to use this tea maker class. So we'll go back to index. We'll say use Acme Jack, because remember we're using PSR for auto loading. And we're going to say Jack equals new Jack. And we don't have um, the team maker here. We can just swap that out and we can just put Jack. And we'll change that to Jack. So Jack's T. And we're just going to run a composer dump auto load here. Great. PHP index.php. Can't redeclare class Acme Reval. And the reason for that is because our Jack class has Reval. Okay. So we have Revolves T, Redbush, etc., etc., and then we have Jack's T with English Breakfast, etc. So as you can see, now if we had to keep expanding this by creating, um, let's say, a class for Dan, a class for Ben, we can have multiple classes, but our T Maker class will not change. So that's what we want to achieve with the open close principle. I hope that it's made it clear for you because this example really made it click for me. So thanks for watching guys. I hope that cleared up exactly what the open close principle means. If you still have any questions, please put them in the comments below and please like and subscribe. Thanks very much.